Okay, so during the course of this presentation you'll find out how standing waves link guitar strings, javelins and bullwhips. Understanding what happens on wave reflection is the first step in understanding standing waves. Here a wave pulse is sent down the spring and reflected off the fixed end. It is actually switched upside down or inverted uh, which corresponds to a phase change of 180 degrees. So here in the animation we see a black pulse coming in and a red wave being reflected. What actually happens is some kind of addition of the waves in between and we'll see that now. So if we put the blue dots to represent numerical values for the incoming wave the green dots would be the numerical values for the reflected wave and these turquoise dots will add up to the, the what you actually see on the spring Again, uh, at the end there you can see uh, you've got a positive value for the blue dot and a negative value for the green dot, so they subtract and they essentially cancel each other out. And as the wave progresses, you're getting more and more cancellation, and the sum of the waves that you actually see on the spring gets smaller and smaller until you get perfect cancellation. and then the wave seems to sort of appear out of nowhere on the bottom and eventually you're left with the pulse which is completely inverted uh, moving down the spring uh, back to its origin So now again back to the animation and let's model a wave coming in to a fixed surface and being reflected. So the blue wave coming in, the, the green wave being reflected and this turquoise wave is the sum of those two waves. You can see here that you've got like a positive value for the blue wave, a negative value for the green wave and it'll add up to zero if the amplitudes are the same, which we'll be assuming. The next step, when you move it forward a bit further, you actually get a positive value and you get a bigger value, although negative in this case, for the actual wave that's seen. As you move this process forward you see a pattern emerges and you get these fixed points that don't seem to vibrate much or have very small amplitude and they're called nodes. And you get other points which have maximum amplitude and are vibrating a lot and they're called antinodes. And this is basically what a standing wave is. Guitar strings are fixed at both ends and this limits the types of waves that can form because you'd have to start with a node and an, an end with a node. The lowest frequency to produce a standing wave will produce the fundamental mode of vibration which in this case is just half a wave long. The first overtone will be doubling the frequency and producing a wave that's equal to the length of the string. One whole wave is equal to the length of the string and as you increase the frequency you'll find more situations where you get standing waves occur and these are named uh, first, second, third overtone and so on. If you want to write algebraic expressions for these standing waves it's simple enough as long as you remember to draw them first. Uh, you'd have to start with a node and end with a node and then depending on which one you're drawing either don't add any nodes in the center or add them. You can then simply write an expression in terms of L uh, by just counting the number of half waves you've got. For instance, in this last one, the third overtone, you've got four half waves, uh, and then simplify down algebraically. So, what the hell have bullwhips got to do with anything? So, essentially, a bullwhip is like a string or a spring that's fixed at one end, but free to move at the other and when you get reflections, again, and reflections are important to understanding this, uh, the reflections do not get inverted, there's no phase change, they just come back and if you look at the spring closely now you'll see that they just travel backwards as they 
went forwards. Here again we're going to look at the animation and watch um, the black wave coming in and the red wave being reflected but of course this isn't actually what happens on the string on the string you see some kind of addition and with additional um, uh, analysis we can get a better understanding of what's actually happening so again we're going to use the uh, blue dots and the green dots the blue dots representing the wave coming in <coughs> numerical values for it the green dots the reflected wave and then we can add them up numerically and get the turquoise line which is what you would actually see on the on the actual string or the, the spring itself or the whip um, and here you can see that because the uh, the black and the red lines are both going to be positive numbers the amplitude is going to eventually double and it's in that doubling of the amplitude that the um, that the whip increases its velocity velocity massively and uh, parts of the whip actually end up breaking the sound barrier and creating a sonic boom which is the cracking you hear and here we see that in more detail Okay, so by hand it's very difficult to produce these modes of vibration in an open-ended or a, a non-fixed end uh, spring. But they do exist and uh, they can be described just as we described the others in terms of uh, the number of wavelengths that fit on the spring. And you can see in the first example it's a, a quarter of a wave, the next is three quarters of a wave, and finally five quarters of a wave. So now we need to look at a uh, string that's not fixed at either end and is vibrating and a good example would be a javelin thrown very hard so in this clip we see uh, this guy's going to give it an extremely hard throw um, and on this shot it's hard to see but if we slow down the footage and especially looking at the zoomed in bit we can see that the javelin is vibrating and it is vibrating in the way you'd expect a spring that's not fixed at either end to vibrate. So obviously if I had tried to produce those standing waves on a spring it would have been extremely difficult but on the javelin we did see uh, possibly I think it was the, the first overtone that, that we saw uh, but the fundamental mode of vibration is also possible and all of these again can just be described in terms of the length of the string or the thing that's vibrating uh, algebraically and you just count the number of half waves and quarter waves in this case okay so let's have a bit of a summary we've seen the guitar string which was fixed at either end so we had to start with a node and end with a node we've also seen the bullwhip where we had to start with a node at the hand and end with an antinode at the end and we've also seen the javelin which starts with an antinode and ends with an antinode because the wavelength or lambda of a wave can be described as velocity of the wave divided by its frequency we can substitute this into the equations um, and give ourselves a lot more scope for solving problems um, and apply these equations to lots more situations now what's great about this is we've only looked at transverse waves but everything we've learned applies directly to longitudinal waves like sound waves for instance a pipe open at both ends would be a flute now when you draw the standing wave that would occur on a spring but inside of the open pipe uh, the antinodes that you're drawing actually represent where the air pressure will vary the most and the nodes is where the air pressure will remain pretty much the same uh, and if you think about a flute you can imagine that the, uh, the open end where the sound comes out would be vibrating by uh, the most amount for an object closed at one end you can think of the human voice uh, some point in the chest is a fixed point and the, uh, where your mouth is open is where you get an antinode uh, and maximum vibration taking place so probably the coolest application of standing waves is singing in the shower uh, what you've got there is a pipe that's fixed at both ends or a cubicle fixed at both ends and you can produce all kinds of overtones which make the sound more pleasing and why people sound better when they're singing in the shower and not so great when they're rolled out on stage <coughs> so uh, I'm planning on making some more videos on standing waves in sound if you're interested or you enjoyed this please subscribe like and share uh, and thanks for watching any 
helpful suggestions for improvements and I'll work on it.